Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. Today I saw an article on Umbraco.com saying that the release candidate for Umbraco 8.7 was out. So this is quite an important time because this is a big release. Um, it adds quite a lot of changes to Umbraco, one of which is mine's in there, so I'm happy about that, but mine's only a minor part to play in this whole release. Uh, but the point of this video is that it's a release candidate and we all need to test it out if we can. So if we can offer some of our free time up to just give it a spin, I'm going to show you the quickest way that I know how to get it set up and running uh, really easily uh, to test these sort of things out when you've got these releases. It's also useful when you're working on the, uh, when you're trying to answer questions on the Umbraco forum as well, and you need to run something in a specific version. So you go to the download page. Um, so the way you get to that is on our Umbraco is here, download, and then you can choose the version. So we want to choose the release candidate version. So I'm just going to go, and so previous releases, and then it's not in here, but if I go back, it was linked to on that blog post, and the URL is download slash releases 870. So you click on that there. I've already downloaded it. I've put it, I've ext copied it into my folder where I keep all my different versions, and I've extracted it here. So now I'm going to right click and open with Visual Studio Code. And I've done that already. So I'm in this already. So the next part is you need to make sure you've got an extension installed that is called IIS Express, I think. Yep, yeah, and it's by Warren Buckley, who works for Umbraco. Um, so if you make sure you've got that installed, then what you can do is you can view command palette and you can just do whilst you're in the context of you've opened this folder as a project in here, just do view command palette and then start website. And that will open up the website that you're in. So this downloaded folder is going to run it as a website for you in Visual Studio Code with IIS Express. And it's as simple as that. And then you'll just quickly run through the installer and um, I always do admin at admin.com and then password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, just to get me through and test things out. So you could test it with the default starter kit. You could put your um you could do it as an empty install. So try all different ways if you get a chance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero. I'm going to do a custom install. And I don't want a starter kit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install the clean starter kit because um, I quite quite like that. Again, that's quite vain. Sorry. Um, so I built the clean starter kit just because I prefer it over the, the default starter kit that comes with Umbraco. But I'm interested in this scenario just to see, does it run? Because whenever there's a new version of Umbraco, I have to check to see if my starter kit works in that version. So... We shall see. It's nearly done now. So, so come on, fingers crossed. Let's all worky worky. I suppose this will be the first thing to test, actually, is does it work with my starter kit? And if not, why not? Is it a problem with Umbraco? Is it something I need to change about my starter kit? So don't show this tour again. And then I want to go to packages. And then I'm going to install a starter kit. So click on starter kits. There's it. There it is install package i suppose if it doesn't work i could try starting again and doing the default start kit the good thing about doing this with the uh, bracket versions i can always right click and extract files and then choose another um choose call it a different folder name and that way i've got another instance so i can rename the folder with like 8.7 release candidate with clean start kit and i can do with coacher start kit or something like that or with default start kit. Right, that's logged me out for some reason. So that's the first thing to know. So we'll just see if that's caused any issues. Don't want to complain. Right, oh, what's this pop up? Oh, this might be the advertising. You know, um, I think there's something where it says, oh, can we do some marketing for you? Yeah, this is it. Do you want to stay updated? No, thanks. You might say yes, but I just said no because it's not even my email address. I used admin at admin.com. So first of all, things don't look much different. 
um, just installing this starter kit, probably for this video, I should have just done the default starter kit, but never mind. Let's click on finish. Any minute now. Right, um, yeah, it's all looking the same at the moment. I'm probably not even going to notice half of the things. That's a good thing with this, is because it's all gradual releases, you don't realise all of the effort and work that's gone into um, making it such a smooth experience, like with accessibility and all sorts, you probably won't ever even notice them. Let's just see if this runs. This is my first test. And I've not actually had a play with 8.7 yet, so I don't even know um, half of the things that are in here. Right, it looks like this is working. Yeah, so that's one good test. So I can say that the starter kit works with 8.7. It looks like it does anyway. I can carry on testing, but yeah. Uh, let's have a look in the back office then. So let's see what this said about this sorts of things. So we've got a block list editor. So that's one of the most exciting parts of this release is this block list editor. So we um, let's create a composition block. I've not done this, so I'm making it up. And I'm just going to quickly just do this. You could stop at this point and just have a play, do what you want now. But if you want to stay with me, then stay with me and just have a quick look at this. Um, Let's see if we can add one. So content blocks, I'll just call it that. Something, uh, um, enter your content blocks. So I like to use Doctype Grid Editor, so I'm really interested in this, to see how it compares with Doctype Grid Editor. So let's have a look. First of all, I'm looking for it and I can't see anything. Uh, so it doesn't show up from here. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to do a label. I'm just going to, oh no, not a new one. Where's you reuse? Oh, that this looks different actually. Where's reuse? Common. Right. Text box. Oh, oh I like this. This is nice. So yeah, let's do label. So these are the existing ones, label string, submit, save. I'm just choosing label because it's harmless while I go off and I work out why I can't do the block list editor. So let me have a look at data types. So when you're creating a content grid data type, you need to create it in here first and then to use it. So maybe that's what we have to do with the block list. Let's have a go. Block list editor. Block list, there it is. Woohoo, available blocks. Availableblocks.com. So I've got an icon link item, so it's saying that this is available. So I'm guessing that this is probably um, because it's an element type. So I think with this, it's you can only do element type. So I'm just going to add it. Uh, amount, set a required range of blocks. What does that mean? Not to, okay, not to infinity. Yeah. Live editing mode. Do we want to do live editing? Uh, overlays for live updated custom views. Mm, didn't know about this, so I don't know much about these. I'm just going to do save on this, and then I'm just want to just I'm just itching to use it. So let's just stick this on here. Um, change this now. Oh, don't want to go into settings of that. I want to take that off, and I want to do block list editor. So I'll just start typing block. Yeah. There we go. Submit, save. And then it's not really relevant to have my icon link item. So I've got an icon class and a link. But um, what I can do is just apply this to one of my pages. So I'm just going to put it on my content page. Compositions. And then choose block list editor. Now I've not considered naming or anything like that i'm just having a dive around and a play but i just this is the main thing that i wanted to look at so please forgive me if i am a bit gung-ho right where is it block list editor where are you content blocks enter your content blocks okay we'll do something and then link is 
I'll just link to the contact page. Thank you. Submit. Right, so it's added that there. So there's no preview, uh, but there is a copy. Copy to clipboard, add content, clipboard, click that, save. Ooh, cheeky. So we can do a, a copy and paste sort of thing. So that's good. And you can delete them. Oh, what's this? Oh, you can add in between. I like that. That's a nice little user interface thing. Not noticed any errors at the moment. Maybe if I have a quick look at the settings. Um, if I go to log viewer and let's see ooh, what errors can I tell that I've had. Log scrubber task failed. Oh, don't know if that's no. Don't know how how uh, fatal that one is. Um, what else? Yeah, I think I think that's probably it. But anyway, have a look, have a play, um, test it out, do all sorts of things with it, and try and break it and give feedback to Umbraco. And I think on that blog post, it tells you how to give feedback. So if you if you notice any issues, you need to raise it on GitHub on the GitHub issue tracker. So if you click on the link on here and then you can create a new issue here and then already people are um, logging it. They're logging um, 8.7 release candidate issues. So it's good. People are doing it. So hopefully this video helps you get uh, doing it quicker and uh, feeding back so that when it does get released properly it will be a much more solid solid version so they're going to be fixing bugs but not adding new features now it's feature rich it's feature complete for this version so thank you for watching and i'll see you again another day goodbye